It can be quite daunting starting a new Ironman account. Not being able to trade makes it quite difficult to get yourself on your feet. In fact, I think the early game of an Ironman is the most difficult. As you get later into the game and have higher levels, you will get access to multiple ways to get resources you need without trading with other players and it becomes much easier to become self-sufficient. In this video, I hope to guide you through the first few hours of your Ironman account. Since RuneScape is an open world game, this is by no means a definitive guide. This would just be my own preference if I were to start an Ironman account again. Before we start, I want to note that this video assumes you have played RuneScape before. I will not be explaining the concepts or mechanics of the game. This will be a step-by-step -step direction on how to get the first few levels on your account. For those of you that want a more conceptual idea of how to start your account, these guys follow three main themes. 1. Get access to as much of the world as possible through the Lowstone Network. 2. Try to do as many quests as possible to gain early levels. 3. Attempt to gain a significant amount of starting cash, as cash is quite useful for an Iron Man. While you are watching this, you might also notice some weird edits in the footage. This is because as I was filming for this guide, there were some errors in my notes, so I had to backtrack to fix my errors which created some inconsistency in the footage. So apologies for any difference in inventory or levels throughout the footage of this guide. First thing you need to do is to create your account. Once you have created your account and logged in, customize your appearance, be sure to pick a female player this will actually be useful later. And under advanced play mode, select Iron Man, or if you prefer, a hardcore Iron Man. At the what is your experience with RuneScape option, pick I have played very recently, and you will arrive into Birth Up. From the Birth Up Lowstone, head northeast to the Birth Up Barracks and talk to Major Mary Rancor. Select option one, I have lost my Dwarven Army Axe, and she will give you one. This will be our axe and hatchet. Then speak to Commander Denelith next to her to get the Death Plateau quest. Leave the barracks and head west. Go through the gap by the wall guards between the building and the fort gate and head straight north into the cave to speak to Sabbath. Select option 1. I have been sent to look for a route to the Death Plateau. Can you help and go through the dialogue? Exit the cave and continue heading west. Go up the ramp and head south to a little hut. Speak to Frida inside the hut who will give you a pair of old climbing boots. Home teleport back to Berthop and head east to talk to blacksmith Dunstan who is hammering a sword by the house. Select option 1 in the dialogue and he will put fresh spikes in the climbing boot. Now head west back to Frida who will hand you a report. Read the report, go back east and back into Sabbath's cave. Mind the east wall of his cave and enter the cavern. Go through the cave and climb the cliff sides on the end of the cave and exit out the cavern. Kill the troll called the map and home Teddy back to birth up. Speak to Commander Danileth and your quest will be complete. Use all your lamps on her blow. Head south and speak to Tam McGrubber to get a wicked hood. Then head inside the shop and speak to the apprentice Clara to get 33 mine runes and air runes. Keep heading south until you reach Berthop's mine. Here, mine copper and tin, then smith a bronze ore box. Continue mining and smithing until you reach level 10 mining and level 8 smithing. While you smith doesn't really matter, the XP per ore is the same. Cut the lapis gemstones you get and you should hopefully get level 5 crafting before you reach level 8 smithing. 
If you did not get level 5 crafting of level 8 spitting, go cut some trees to get some wooden knots to make lapis brooch until you get level 5 crafting. Any excess wood you chop should be turned into arrow shafts for flashing XP. Once you have reached level 10 mining and level 8 smithing, head south to Tavoli to find a shop to sell what you have made. Before you leave the birth of area, you should have Dorbert Army Axe, Wicked Hood, Completed Death Plateau, level 10 mining, level 8 smithing, and level 5 crafting. After you have sold your stuff, buy a rope from Jack Oval shop just outside the birth of mine. Head south to the Druidic Circle, speak to Kakimix to start the Druidic Ritual Quest. Continue heading south until you reach the third house where you'll speak to Sanfu. Select option 1 and he will tell you the list of things you need for the quest. Head north into the Mount of Soil that is a cave entrance. Head south to the end of the cave to fill your vial from the spring and then head back out of the cave. From the cave, head south again and round to the lake until you see some wandering wormwood. Pick a wormwood and head back north. On your way back, you will see a fishing spot next to the wheat field. Fish here for a stone fish. Chip some scales of the fish and speak to Sanfu who will give you a potion. Quest complete. Head back south to the summoning building and speak to pick up sticks to stop the wolf vessel quest. Head south and across the bridge and speak to Skeletrix by the well. Head down the well while you proceed to piss your pants and run away. Head slightly north from the well to activate the Tavoli Lowstone before heading back to pick up sticks across the river. Head upstairs and search the drawer for an embroidered pouch. Head south to the pest shop owner and select option 1 to get some white hair meat. Go back across the bridge and go up the mountain until you see a dead body. Search the body for an amulet. Go back and speak to pick up sticks, then use the summoning altar to create a pouch. Speak to pick up sticks again and select option 1 to tell him you have made the pouch. Go back to the well, speak to Skeletrix, quest complete. From the well, head slightly north to speak to Nels Newton to start the quest Let Them Eat Pie. From Nels, head south and back across the bridge, if your inventory is a mess like mine, you can use the bank to bank some of your stuff before you cross the bridge. After the bridge, pick up some fish bait by the barrels of fish, then to the wheat field to pick some wheat. Head back across the bridge and into the first building north of the bridge. Go up the stairs, put your wheat and fish bait into the hopper and pull the lever. Head downstairs, grab a pot and take the flour from the flour bin. Head north and speak to nails again. Go past nails and fish a crayfish at the lake. With your crayfish, walk to the flax field to get a cussy and decayed crayfish. Trade Farmer Jones who is right next to the flax field to get a free potato. Speak to Nails again, head back up north to a snow covered area and put your potato into a cabbage hole. Combine the crayfish and potato into a pie and cook it. There's a range you can use in the house next to Nails. Speak to Nails, then head south to pick pocket pears to get expensive spices. Use the spices on your pie and head into the house next to Nels, up the stairs and speak to Rollo to give him the pie. Talk to Nels again, then head back up the stairs to open the chest. Go back to Nels who will give you a letter. Take the letter down south to Pierre, then go back to speak to Nels. Quest complete. You will receive an expensive spices necklace. This is quite a useful early game as it will boost healing from all foods. With the quest complete, Head south to the docks and take the boat to Damonheim. Run up the stairs until you reach the entrance of Damonheim. 
speak to the dungeoneering tutor who will give you a ring of kinship. Home Teddy back to Tavoli. Just northeast of the Tavoli Lowstone, there are some pompous merchants. Thieve these merchants until you have reached level 5 thieving. Head a bit north to the lake, stay here and fish and cook the crayfish until you have reached level 10 cooking. Once done, we can start heading east and out of Tavoli. Before you leave Tavoli, you should have completed Wolf Whistle, Let Them Eat Pie and Druidic Ritual. You should also have a level 5 thieving and level 10 cooking. Before we move to the next region, you should check where the circus is. The circus, or Balthazar's Big Top Bonanza, is a weekly activity that moves from city to city. And it is a great way to get some starting ranged magic and agility experience. In the making of this guide, the circus was in Edgeville, so I'll be making a trip to the circus when we get to the Edgeville part of the guide. You should check where the circus is via IS Wiki when you watch this and make a detour when we visit that city in this guide. With that out of the way, we will now cross the Tavoli Bridge and head east towards the Tavoli Gates. Exit the gate and speak to the dwarf in the house opposite. This starts the quest What's Mine is Yours. Head south from the dwarf to head towards Falador. On your way, unlock Falador's Lowstone. Our first stop in Falador is Falador Park. In the park, speak to Wyson and buy two woad leaves. We will need this for a later quest. Head south from the park into Falador's castle. Speak to the squire to start the knight's sword. Head back out of Falador to the northeast to Edgeville. Once we have reached Edgeville, unlock the Edgeville lowstone. Here, in this guide, I will be doing the weekly circus because that is where the circus was when I made this guide. Again, Please check where the circus is for you when you watch and adjust accordingly. From Edgeville, we'll be heading south to Barbarian Village. At Barbarian Village, talk to Dordoran, who is just by the Barbarian Village entrance near the bridge to start Gunnar's Ground. The next step in the quest needs to go back to Edgeville, but before we do that, we're going to head down the hole in the center of the village to get to the stronghold of security. You want to make your way through the levels to reach the center where you will open a chest to get a reward. By making your way through all four levels, you will get a total of 10k and some boots. You can either check the map on IS Wiki for a path or enlarge your interface map to see which is the easiest path to the center. Once you get to the last level, home teleport to Edgeville. From the Edgeville Lowstone, head east to the furnace and speak to Jeffrey, who will give you a gold ring. With the ring, head back south to the Barbarian Village. Speak to Dordoran, then engrave the ring. Speak to Dordoran again and take the ring to Godoran in the center of the village. After speaking with her, head north to the Longhouse to speak to Chieftain Gunthor. Go back and speak to Godoran, then go and speak to Dordoran. Help Dordoran to create his poem using the phrase stray, threat, and swept to war. Give the poem to Gudran, then speak to Dororan for the last time to complete the quest. God, those names are really, really hard to say. From Barbarian Village, we are going to cross the bridge to the east and head into Varok. Once you have reached the center of Varok where the fountains are, head into the staff shop and buy a battle staff of Zaf for 7,000 GP. Head north into Varro Castle and speak to the king to start priest in peril. Head to the library north of the castle and talk to Raudo about Imkandal Dwarves, which is option 3. Head out of the castle, back towards the center of Varrock and enter the clothing shop southwest of the fountain. At the clothing shop, buy a set of priest robes. Go southeast from the clothing shop to speak to Aubrey at the rune store and get the free runes as well as buy 6 water and earth runes. Head south out of Varrock and unlock the Lowstone. From the Lowstone, go west until you reach the Varrock Mine. Here, begin by mining one of the copper ores which will spawn a living rock brawler. Kill the brawler and pick up the ore it drops. While you're here, mine four iron ore as well. Head east, past the Lowstone towards the Varrock Southeast Mine. Mine one of the copper rocks at the Southeast Mine which will spawn a brawler again. 
kill and pick up the ore it drops. Pick at least 4 red berries from red berry bush next to the mine, then head towards the archaeology center. From the mine, we'll be going all the way east to the river where we'll be talking to the acting guild master to start the archaeology tutorial. There is a bank here to bank your inventory as it should be pretty full at this point. Complete the archaeology tutorial and you should get a certificate showing you are now an archaeology intern. During this process, you should also have unlocked Font of Life perk which gives you more LP. From the archaeology guild, head north until you reach brother Samuel. Speak to brother Samuel, we'll start the missing presumed death quest. There's a few steps to do here. If you prefer to use the IOS wiki guide, we'll be doing this quest until we reach the point where we need to head towards the wizard's tower. After starting the quest, investigate the following. Northmost slaughter monk, plant east of the chest, southwesternmost slaughter monk, tree with an arrow south of brother Samuel. Speak to brother Samuel, then head up north stairs to speak to the odd old man until you get all the information you need from him. Talk to brother Samuel again and head east to the area south of the church. Here you want to investigate the following. Killed elf, plant west of the dead elf, clothing on the fence, the bench. Go slightly west and up the stairs to speak to Blaze Sharp Eye by the beacon to coerce information from him, then head back to Brother Samuel who will tell you to go to the wizard's tower. Once you are at this point, home tell you to Tavoli, head south from the Tavoli Lowstone to the dock where there is a boat that will take you to Lumbridge. Once you are in Lumbridge, activate the Lowstone, Head into the church just south of the Lowstone to speak to Father Eric to start Restless Ghost. Head a bit further south to the graveyard to speak to Xenia who will start the Blood Pact quest. Head into the catacomb next to Xenia, going through the entire catacomb killing everything your way will complete this quest. From the Lumbridge graveyard, head south into the swamp until you find a hut next to the mining site. Speak to Father Ernie in the hut to get a gold speaking amulet. Go back to the Lumbridge graveyard, open the large coffin south of the catacomb, then speak to the ghost with the ghost speaking amulet equipped. Head back south to the swamp, head directly south to reach the mining site. Near the mining site there is a large rock. Search the rock to get money skull and head back to the graveyard. You do not need to kill the skeleton that spawns. Use the skull on the open coffin and the quest will complete. Bury the bones you get as a reward for some prayer experience. Head into Lumbridge Castle and speak to the cook to start cook's assistant. Head north from the castle until you reach Fred the farmer. Take the very large egg just outside the door to his house, then head west to the wheat farm. Pick a wheat, go into the mill tower and speak to Millie about making an extra fine flour. Head up stairs, put the wheat into the hopper, operate the controls then fill a pot with flour at the bottom of the tower to get very fine flour. Head east from the wheat tower and cross the bridge to get to the cow field and use a bucket on the prized dairy cow to get top quality milk. Head back to Lumbridge Castle to give all the ingredients to the cook to complete the quest. Once the quest is done, we're going to have to backtrack north back to the flour mill to make another pot of flour. We're doing another trip because the game won't let you make another pot of flour while you have the extra fine flour from cook's assistant in your inventory. 
Once you have the flour, you can go northeast of the flour mill to Beefy Bill to get some buckets of water and pie shells. From the mill, head into the cabbage field, then the onion patch just behind Fred's house to pick up two onions. Combine the bucket of water, flour, and red berry together to make a red berry pie. From here, we will head to the north of Lumbridge Castle where there are multiple stalls. We'll be theming the cake stalls to use as food. I suggest you get two full inventories. Once you have the food, head to the Lumbridge Castle courtyard where you'll find the Slayer Master Jacqueline. Get Slayer assignments from her and train Slayer and Magic together. You'll want to stay here until you reach level 30 in Magic as that's when you will unlock search so we can start zooming around in the next part of the guide. Most of the tasks from Jacqueline can be killed in the Lumbridge Catacombs. Those that can't can be easily reached from the Tablet Lowstone. This may take a bit of time, but I think it's definitely worth the grind. Plus, the additional magic level will help with some of the combat we'll be doing next in the next part of this guide. So that is it for part one of this starter guide for an Iron Man on RuneScape. I will see you in part two of the guide once you have reached 30 magic.